Long now has mankind looked up to the skies and wondered if we are alone in this universe. Many miraculous things have been spotted all over the world, reported by our militaries, and sparked great debates amongst ourselves. I am here to tell you that ladies and gentlemen, people of Earth, brothers and sisters of all races, all countries, that we are not alone. We have never been alone. That some higher power has ceased to spread the gift of life throughout the universe and beyond all comprehension. It is in these times we must learn to love one another. We must not share hate, but joy. We must not inhibit, but we must grow. These beings are our friends. They are our family. They want to help us become better, to see the true potential of mankind. And for maybe one day, we will join them in their voyage to help other beings from other star systems. As shocking as this news may be, it is nothing new. Our governments of the world have known for quite some time that we are not alone in this universe, and we have had contact for many of years, slowly preparing the American public and the publics of the world for such a revelation. We are not alone, and we are about to embark on the greatest journey mankind has ever experienced. Ladies and gentlemen, we have contact. Well, I must what admit, is up? I must admit, I always like that trailer. You did a really good job there. I say that every single live, but honestly, it was a brilliant. Couple of announcements tonight. We're joined by Nubs, another under himself. Nubs. Nubs! Hi. That's how we got you on here. I know. Second announcement tonight, ladies and gentlemen. You won't believe it, but Dakota, it's his birthday today. So will you all wish Dakota in the chat a very happy birthday, you know? The wee boy he's getting, he's just a wee young in, you know, so there's some Scottish for you. <laughs> I thought you were going to mute there because when he starts moving about, I just think he's going to mute me, you know. Tempting. <laughs> Josh. Josh, what's that, Josh Hodge? Welcome. Yeah, Josh Hodge, he's great. Well, welcome to the show, my friend. Um, we've got some announcements to make. We're, we're getting a new show soon. Um, we can get into the great detail of this new show, but it will be out soon uh, with a certain people but which will fill you in next week we also will be moving from Wednesday night to a Sunday night, isn't that right Dakota? Yes we've had quite a bit of discussion about this and a lot of the guests we want to try to land are busy people Yes. And plus it would just be easier to get everybody on a weekend, you know, try to relieve a little bit of stress before we all head back into the work week, you know. So contact will be moving over to Sutton Days. So hopefully we can get even more engagement. It'll, it'll be a good move, no doubt. Well, I mean, you think about it, the new show that might be on a Thursday, then it'll be a Friday show with the, the Lost Magic, then the Saturday show and then the Sunday show, and who knows from there, maybe we will bring more shows, you never know, but we're also, we're also going to be working on a certain documentary, Dakota, do you want to tell everyone about this? Ah, yes, and Nubs, this may be something you might be interested yes. in, just for, to have a little fun, but we are in the thought process of putting together a UFO documentary based on what it's like for contactees. Okay. Yeah. 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 Hey, so, Father, hey, Drew. We're still looking into all the made behind-the-scenes details because we have discussions for some 
pretty wide distribution, so we want to make sure we play our cards, yeah. right? Yeah, because the, the documentary, I mean, it's going to be quite a significant documentary. I mean, this is it's got to take quite a lot of work. And mm-hmm. plus, I, I don't know where it will be broadcast once it's done. Where where will where would it be broadcast? Do you get what I say? Well, well, uh, that's usually the last step in the process. Yeah. Actually, it finding a distributor for these types of things it, is it can be difficult. But we do have two major ones lined up. One is well known for paranormal yep. based content. The other has a little bit more distribution to where it can help us get to like Voodoo, Amazon, Google, all the big yeah. ones. So yeah, we're trying to see what our best I options will be. I honestly think it'll be something really, really good, and bring in especially the UFO stuff, you know, mm-hmm. and especially the people that we will be bringing into the UFO documentary. That we can't get into great detail. We can't tell you who it is, but some of them are, are surrounding us right now, and we, we can't really go into great detail about that, you know, because it's it's still getting drawn out, isn't that right, Dakota? Yeah, it's still early in the game. Plus, we don't want to give too much. We just don't want to give too much away off the bat. But Peter's out there. Yeah, we got competitors out there, but we also want to try to make sure everybody who's interested can have get in on the action. There will be opportunities for just about anybody to jump on board if they want to. I would just like to say to the chat before we start our discussion tonight, because we're going to be talking about contactees, and it's an open discussion in the chat, and we will be putting the link into the chat too later on. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just want to say to the chat, Josh Hodges, welcome. Scottish Outlooker, welcome. Uh, Drew's Paranormal Vlog, welcome. Who have we all got here? Right. So that's all that's there now. Could you please share this out, guys, for the share it absolutely everywhere. Um, because we're trying to grow the channel, as one knows. What's that Ooh. cute Goth girl, girl gamer. gamer? Hello. Hello. Hey, you know, yeah, I have to do that. Well. Nice voice, you know. So, Dakota, would you like to kick off the show by discussing what we we're going to discuss? Hi, hey, Greeny. All right. So, yeah. you got to admit, when it comes to UFO research, there's a lot of people who just focus on, oh, there's something weird in the sky or maybe the reports of UFOs. There's not a lot of research that goes into the people that say they're in contact yeah. with these entities. Yes. Now, naturally, we have to take some assumption that we all assume that they might be crazy, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. you can't ever rule that out. But you have to admit, the recent events within the last couple of years, especially, things are amping up to where every party that you would expect to be skeptical about this type of stuff are having to go, uh, what's going on? I mean, I don't know. What do you think about it, Nubs? What do you think about the UFO form? Phenomenon. There you go. I said that actually, right? That's I think that in the past few years, especially the past year and a half, there have been more fightings and more people getting contact in UFOs oh, yeah. and all that. It's it's. I personally believe that in the next couple months, there's going to be not an invasion because I don't think they're going to invade us, but it's going to be. A huge, uh, pretty much they're going to let everybody know they're here. Yes. Yes. That, just... that, that is the main thought. That's what's going along a lot of the bigger channels, like Elena's channel. Like, you, Dakota, could you fill us in on that? Ah, uh, yes. I've been watching some of Elena Denon's videos. Yeah. She was a guest on here. We're definitely going to try to get her back because she has. Yeah, so much awesome. incredible info, and I do know that she is working on another one of her books, which I am excited for. Nice. Basically, for those of you who don't know, she is someone who has direct contact with a society known as the Galactic Federation of Worlds. Yes. And naturally, like I said, you would think that 
you know, someone who says they have such a contact, especially when you read her books, they're trying to weave together a really interesting story. But the thing is, with Elena's work, a lot of what she says is coming true. See, there's an interesting question, right? There's an interesting question there, right? The chess king, right? I've got a theory on this, but when, when you go, Dakota, what's your thoughts on this? Okay. How would they be a cover-up, exactly? See, right. I'll tell you, while he puts out, why would they put a cover up? Right, this is what I think happened to the dinosaurs. You've got to remember how long has humans been on there for, hypothetically. What they say, obviously, we're a lot older than what they talk about. But if we're to do this right, if we're to do this, to say how the academics say it, right, how long has humans been on there for since we were like monkeys and stuff? How long would you, what, 300,000 years? Round about longer that? than that. 400,000? Longer, longer, right? I'm going back to like I'm going back to the right, right. Let's let's look at this, right? We'll say that the humans been on there for say, right? We'll say a mad theory here. We'll say we've been on there for how long, Dakota? Oh, hold on, hold on. I I don't want to. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do a quick we're gonna do a little Google search. I want to make sure we get this right. thing right. The first of okay, here, here's just a little tidbit. It's the first right. thing that popped up from Wikipedia. The early, the mo- earliest traces of modern humans, right. okay, is four billion years ago. The earliest traces yeah. we found, four billion, okay. And by the way, the Chess King, dinosaurs were real, but if you actually look at some of the disclosure documents, the aliens have been around that, that, for that, that long true. and had a hand, may have had a that hand in their extinction. True. Right, There's a, was, actually a lot of information that may back that up. That's what I was going to say before that, right? The dinosaurs were around for millions and millions and millions and millions of years, right? Think about it. Do you know think some of them maybe were advanced? Some of them were intelligent. I mean, you think about the reptilian aliens that have been known to visit people. What happens if that's like an offspring for them? And maybe, maybe the, there was a war of some kind and it wiped out this planet. Well, we come back. Here's another thing that a lot of people ignore. They say that if the dinosaurs manage to survive, chances are they would actually evolve a humanoid shape. Right. To what we would know the stereotypical reptilian looks like. Yes. So, I mean, it's a possibility. Yes. But it's not necessarily that there's cover-ups. There's legitimately things that we don't know. They're saying that there's civilizations out of Antarctica. There was a time when Antarctica was all jungle and everything's frozen yeah. over. Now that everything's melting off, we're going to find some stuff. Good to think about this, Tay, right? And a lot of people think this is all hop, cop, bloody rubbish and all that. But I do believe in it. I think that as an inner earth, I think there's something below the earth. I think there's something that's been hidden for. The, I, I wouldn't say it's like a, it's like Godzilla versus Kong or something. Like that. I don't, I don't mean that. I don't mean that. But I think there's, I do think there is secret things buried below our feet, maybe miles down, right? And I think there is bases, massive bases, and I think they were there before we were there. And I think this is, I think. A lot of stuff's getting discovered now. I mean, you think about Antarctica, people are like, oh, Antarctica, there's an ice wall and there's a ferment, you kind of get space and stuff like that, flat earthers, right? But you've got to remember, guys, that Antarctica was a jungle at one point. It had, it, and, and there's actually, there's actually saying there, it's actually starting to thaw out. Mm hmm. I mean, there's actually patch. People have actually come out and said that there's actually green patches starting to appear mm-hmm. in Antarctica. I mean, how long before all of that melts and shows like ancient buildings and ancient ruins that could be there? Well, there were dinosaur fossils found on Antarctica. There's obviously there's talks of pyramid-like structures. That's right. That's right. There's, and that's the thing, you say how long 
truth is, a lot of the thawing out that's going on is moving a lot faster than a lot of people realize. Yeah. Well, right. This is this is where people come into the global warming stuff and that and the pollution and stuff. Right? I think the pollution is out of order, right? The, the pollution in this world is totally out of order. There's too much plastic in the seas. We're eating it. It's everywhere, right? It's causing cancers. We know that, right? Mm-hmm. But what people don't realise, they're saying, oh, it's because of pollution and that, and the, the atmosphere's warming up, and and we'll have to cut our greenhouse gases. I don't think it is, guys. I mean, you think about it, right? Mars is warming up right now, too. So if that was the case, how's our ozone layer affecting Mars and other planets? And Jupiter's warming up. It's been proven that this Earth goes through cycles. And a thousand years from now, Britain could be a desert and the United States could be like covered in snow constantly. I mean, just look at it this year. I mean, Scotland's had one of its warmest, warmest winters on record, right? Where America has had one of its coldest on records. I think we're going through a cycle and I think it's going to get worse before it gets better. Well... Here's a lot of things you have to consider when it comes to the whole cycle theory. Just like the human I'm body, back. planetary structures that have yeah. cycles they go through in their lifespans. It you you can find it in the, some of the biggest structures out there, to down to the smallest atoms. There are cycles. Yeah. But just like the human body, there's certain things of which stress and things of, that maybe shouldn't be in the system in the first place that are harmful to it that can affect how those cycles move. Yes. So, yes, I mean, there's a natural cycle, but we could, the global warming may be adding to it. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I totally agree 100%. Right, right, let's take the Gulf Stream. It flows past around America, around Mexico, around Argentina, then it flows mm. up towards Britain, right? See, um, Antarctica is melting. It's melting at an unreal rate, right? And what's going to happen there is it's that fresh water is going to mix with the salt water, right? And it's going to it's going to actually change the course of the Gulf Stream. See if that happens, Britain will turn into basically a desert, and America will turn into the new North Pole, basically. Oh great! <laughs> I've already hit the cold. <laughs> I mean, uh, you go, you, you, here you go. Yeah. It's going to happen. Hey, northern monkeys, just like to say, hey, you northern know, monkeys in there and paranormal world investigators. But that this is what's this is what's going to happen. I mean, the, I mean, I will admit. I mean, did you know? And this has got nothing to do with the supernatural whatsoever. But did you know that there's a a, a garbage island of the size of Texas in the Pacific? Yeah. There's a few of them. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And they say it's about a foot deep, the, the, the size of Texas. And it's mostly plastic bottles. Did you, I can't get away with this stuff. And I don't know how this has been allowed to happen, but Britain and America, they recycle all their plastics, right? They send them to China, right? And then China says, oh, I'll, I'll pay you for that. And I don't know how they, they do this. So they take all the plastics, right? They get paid to take the plastics. Then they put the plastics in a ship, right? And then they sail in the middle of the Pacific and dump them. Yeah. That's a good question, uh, Chef, not, Chef King. What that? language would alien use? Would it be verbal like dolphin where we struggle to decode? Or would it be telepathically? Would aliens use? It, it would really like depend on the civilization. <clears throat> No, it depends how advanced they are. It depends. It depends on so many different things. There, the chances are they're going to have their own language. That's true. There is yeah. proof from CIA documents that psychic abilities are real, so telepathy is not out of the question. And from that, it stimulates the mind into actually registering the words it wants to relay to the recipient. Yeah. So it really depends on the circumstances. It's not just going to be one set language. Ever, they're all, they may have a universal language they use for interspecies communication. They've had time to develop that, but they're also going to have their own native tongues. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, I mean, 
Um, actually, I got pictures that I need to show y'all from one of the investigations I did the other day. Yeah. It was writing all over the wall. It looked like some type of alien writing, but somebody said it could be witch writing. I will find the pictures and I will send it to y'all t- later. Please do. Because I missed the statement to y'all before, but I forgot all about it. And I'm like, if anybody could figure it out, it would probably be y'all. I mean, do you, well, do you yeah. like, here's an equation for Dakota and everybody in the chat. Do you, Dakota, think we are the only intelligent species on this planet? On this planet? On this planet. Really depends on how you define intelligence. The t- intelligence <laughs> is uh, an understanding to the, your fellow entity, an understanding, understanding is in a sense you work together, an understanding, no with technology, but just an understanding is you work together. Because it's improving that that I could say, I I couldn't help it because somebody mentioned it in the chat. Well, you have to consider, um, what was that? The uh, civilian criteria, civilization criteria scale, what was that called though? Yeah. Basically, it's the level of development a society has. Yeah. Basically, the highest ones, there are society that could be essentially be like gods. Their technology makes it to where they can live on the outer rims of black holes and be okay. There's a reason why humans on this planet don't even make it to spot one. No, because we're violent. It's because we're violent and we like to go to war with each other and we like to pollute and we like to kill each other. But what I'm talking about, you know, I'm I'm going to talk about this, right? See dolphins, right? And it's been proven that dolphins and whales are highly intelligent. Oh, they are? Yeah. Now, see below the sea, guys, and a lot of people think this is mad, but see below the sea, there's actually, see a lot of these UFOs and stuff like that have come out of the water. Right, mm-hmm. so it makes you it makes you wonder: is there a break off from the human society, or is it a break off of some other species from Earth that's living under the sea? What's that's that in the chat? Right? No, there is is loads of intelligent life on the planet. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Northern monkeys. It's like exactly. it's a, it really depends on how you look at it. Well, you think about it, right? You think about it, right? We'll go back. 10,000 years, right, or 20,000 years, and you'll have man lighting a fire, sitting in a cave with his wee spear, running about and stuff like that, right? That's intelligent. That's class is intelligent because he's making a fire, he's going out, killing a meal, bringing it back, cooking it and giving it to everybody else, right? I know dolphins don't do that, right? But the, but they're highly intelligent. I mean, did you know that in World War Two, right, the, the, the government actually sh- strapped bombs onto the side of dolphins to try and train them to swim towards the enemy ships. I mean, how sick can you be? And and later on, the U.S. military, the U.S. military have actually have actually tried putting sensors in their ba- brains, trying to basically be spies for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we've, had, we've had several attempts at utilizing animals in warfare, and almost yeah. none of them worked. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 absolutely disgusting. But do you, what's your thoughts, Dakota, right now on alien beings on the Earth right now? I'm not talking ones for space. I'm talking about ones from the Earth that have been here mm. long before we have. There's likely quite a few, actually. Yeah. What do y'all think about the men in black? I personally think that they're aliens. I've heard that, too. Some of the original ones were aliens, but we did try to copy their methods, and we were successful in a lot of them. Okay, so a lot of them aren't. A lot of them are actually human, but the original men in black were aliens. They were part reptilian. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) I, I kind of think it's something because just the way because they take off their glasses and they have these weird eyes. And... What I've learned for the men in black is is there's no nice, there's no look the, the the people that have got to save Earth in the film with all smart. 
right? They're, they're not here for that. They're not here to save you. They're not here to... They're here to bend the rules for... I think, personally, they work for a lot of the greats and the, a lot of the eviler entities on the earth. What's your thoughts, Dakota? Oh, no, they do. It was a classic camouflage method for them to be able to suppress witnesses. Yeah. And they figured if word got out, if they started shooting people, which men in black have been known for, mm-hmm. people would be too scared to operate. But one thing I find funny is that there, you have some of these reports that they get nervous the second someone would try to walk to their microwaves. Because apparently if you turned on the microwave when they're around, so hint, hint, to give this a try and maybe die if it doesn't work. <laughs> Try to get to your microwave. You think you got men in black around, and they'll run off. I, I, I yeah, noticed I, that I cell phones run off. off. <laughs> no, I just find it funny <laughs> that as cell phones became more popular, especially with the recent rollouts of five G, and cell phones use microwave radiation. Yeah, we don't really have any new reports on men in black. It's actually a good point. That you think about it. You think about when when UFOs were off the scale, right? And then they brought out cell phones. What happens if cell phones is a cover? Yes, it's a money making tool, and yes, it's a it's a good thing, and all that. And, but it's not really a good thing if you know what I'm saying. But what happens if they're using the networks, there's all these transmitters, right? To put out like a frequency that makes the average person not notice. Aliens. It wouldn't take much. I mean, what's the what's the film? What's the film where the guy puts the sun specs on and you can see the aliens? What is it? Uh, what's the film, guys in the chat? What's the what's the what's the what's the film where the guy puts on the what do you call it? The sun specs and he's walking about with a gun, shooting all the aliens, and he says, "I'm all out of bubble gum." When he walks into the bank, no, men in black. I can see the, what's it called? It's oh, it's got a, it's these sun specs and they make you see the the aliens and the way everything is. But what happens if that's the cell companies, right? What happens if the cell companies are also putting out a, a unique tone that's maybe well, camouflaging these ships that you can't see? It, it is possible to do that, but it also, another film that should come to mind is the movie Cell, based on the Stephen King novel, mm-hmm. where basically certain frequencies start going out to everybody's cell phone and making them turn into murderous hive mind things. Yeah. Yeah. It's it does not take much. In fact, I do believe certain tones are being trying to be utilized for medical uses nowadays. There's certain tones that are that have been used for crowd control. They can mm-hmm. actually they make you they, they used to use water cannons or tear gas and now they can just point this thing at you and turn it on and it makes you constantly throw up sure. and feel like you're going to faint over and Stuff like that. Yeah, it's called Breaking Spears songs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. That's a legitimate method for deterring some ship companies I, I think using deter pirates. Be, I think you're going to blame just <laughs> no, I, no, I, no, I'm being serious. They, there's a certain ship companies in order to deter pirates, they blared Britney Spears. <laughs> that, that's a legit thing. <laughs> That's typical warfare right there, baby. <laughs> As we were talking about like contactees, right, let's let's jump back to the contactees. Do you know think that as a lot of people, or especially in the internet community, and the UFO community, that have jumped onto the bandwagon to say, oh, the aliens are coming, they're taking me away at night, and oh, I this, that, and the next thing, but they're just making it up? I think some of them are. Yeah. Like, a lot of people just love to make up stuff like that just to get attention and all that. Like, yeah, I've heard, I've seen, the closest thing I've seen is like an oval shape, and it was like going this way, and then it started going backwards, and then side to side, and then yeah. when I wanted to go take a video of it, it was gone. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what it was, but it was oval shaped. It could have been a drone, but it's you still think like... that fascinating that every time you go to take a picture of a UFO, right, something happens to your phone. Mm-hmm. It like it doesn't matter if it's on it doesn't matter if it's on flight mode, right? And it's not getting a signal. 
I seen once. I seen one, and, and I thought, right, that's it. Get my phone out. Like that. And my phone started to flicker as if there was something wrong with it. It's as if it's designed. It's like there's something. There's a frequency that they're putting no. out that's just. Yeah, and I'm going to say this because it does, it does kind of contribute to it. There's a gentleman who I've been trying to get on here to talk about some of his experience. He's disclosed to me. Mm-hmm. He lives out towards Arizona. He's had several levels of contact where he sees what look like tall whites. Some, some stuff that legitimately scared him and I was able to talk. And I was like, yeah, these mm-hmm. things are happening. But as I was trying to get him to come on tonight, my phone started glitching out, and I was just trying to send a quick text message. Yeah. Mm. That's it. See, this is the problem. I think, right, we're using we're using these highly advanced pieces of equipment, right? The phones, the cameras and stuff like that. But I think there's something built into them that recognises things like this. And it makes, it makes it just take a terrible picture. And do you know that? I think it does. I think it's designed, and the, the, whoever's making this, you know, was that Gren, Grainy Page, the moon, yeah, right, the moon, Dakota, now that's an interesting one. What's your thoughts, and this is for you, Nubs, what's your thoughts on the moon? I think that the moon is a base for aliens. What's your thoughts, Dakota? It's been speculated that at least 12 different civilizations are currently conducting operations on the moon, and the Nazis actually had plans to try to set a base up up there, but then, because, yes, they were really big into the occult, they were really big into the UFOs, to stop them, stop them. Yeah. They weren't wanting to go on the moon, they were trying to set something up on Mars, you gotta admit, the old school Nazis are actually a genius level and it's fascinating to study. Not these assholes nowadays. That's yeah, what... yeah, I'm not, exactly. I mean, the moon, to me, I mean, the moon's just they so live. strange. Uh, they live, that's that, thank you. Yeah, uh, monitoring the D live chat because it doesn't pop up in here. Right. Um, the moon, I think the moon is no what it is. I, <laughs> I don't think... Do you know there's actually scraps, right? And th- this is an actual fact. There's a, James, there's a guy that comes in here, his name is James Ramsey. Sometimes he talks about this. And there's actually scraps. You can look up to, like, maybe a thousand years ago, there was... The moon didn't exist in the night sky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And one day it just appeared out of nowhere. Yeah, there's a few different yeah. civilizations that have a similar story where a few thousand years ago their ancestors told that one day it just showed up. Yeah, it just showed up. And which which made me interested is when they said they were on the moon, right, and they crashed the lander into the moon, you know, for a It case, rang like a bell. It rang like a bell as if the moon was hollow. Ooh. I mean, the UFO sightings are off the scale on the moon. I mean, I know the government terrible for trying to cover it up, but the UFO sightings on the moon are totally... Um, they can do it. See, see if you've got a good telescope. I know friends, personal friends, that do, like, photography of the moon, and they've seen the little ships r- going across the surface of the moon. Mm-hmm. And then people will be like, oh, it's maybe a satellite. No, 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 no. It's not a satellite. It can't be a satellite because that's so far away. If that had to come close to you, it'd be huge. It'd be the size of a town. I mean... It's they don't realise it's there's something more happening in the moon. Do you want to drop the link Dakota into the chat? Uh, and we'll see if any of you want to come in, guys, and discuss what yeah, your thoughts are on. on. What do you we have here? Because yeah, we have uh, Doctor Firefly on our D live chat. He po- makes a good point that the moon, Venus, and Saturn are all points of frequency high. T- interest when it comes to UFOs. We, we have Titan yeah. that speculated to... They say it has all the basic building ingredients of life on there. In fact, humans, all we would need is something to combat the cold, and we could survive up there just fine. Yeah. There's a lot of interesting things going out there about that. Well, I watched a thing tonight, NASA. Let's talk about NASA for a second or two where we invite people in. 
Uh, I mean, they're going to know about how they might have found life on Mars. Look, they've known about the life on Mars for, and you know, it's no the it's no the song. Um, you can I mean, they've they've known about life on that planet for a long time. Something happened to that planet a long time ago. I mean, I think I think they've they've had some type of war on that planet because the radiations of the scale. I just think I do think. There was a life foot on Mars, and then it's came to Earth. Something has happened there, or maybe we were there too. Maybe we were in, maybe we were in intergalactic space and race at that time, and there was a terrible war. And maybe we are the what's left, the the survivors. You know, yeah, this is that, the thing. That's actually one of the biggest theories out there is that yeah. there was one time where Mars may have been a lot like the Earth, because when it comes to plant. A lot of the criteria for being able to harbor life, they consider it the Goldilocks zone, where the conditions are not too hot, not too cold. Right. They're sustainable enough to sustain, hold life a lot like ours. Not Mars sure. is at just like the very edge of it. Yes. But the, the, a lot of the speculation that, no, once, that something happened. And there no, when you go to the class, sorry. No, I was just going to say, there's one of those more exotic theories that say if we are descended into Martians, basically they got out of there, they found, say, oh, this planet, it, this is good, we can live here. We came here, we may be repeating the same history that caused Mars to look like it does now. I mean, is there no way to be, what is it, Phobos? That goes around about the moon. I mean, the Mars. Is it Phobos, Phobos and Deimos. I put the one that's meant to have the 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 thing on it. That's meant to have some type of thing. There's meant, meant to be an alien artifact. Is it one? It's one of the moons on Mars. That's meant to have this pyramid or something on it. What is really? it? Yeah, did you know kind about that? Well, this is the first I'm hearing about it. There's there's meant to be a moon. Help us out in the chat, guys. What's the moon? There's meant to be some type of artifact that's on one of the... Oh, it's one, one, one of one the monoliths. Yeah, it's meant to be on top of... It's in one of the moons. I don't think it's on Mars. I was watching... Yeah, uh, it's on movie. Phobos. I'm looking yeah, at it right go. now. Right, there you go. Hmm. So that makes you wonder, you know, what is it? Well, a lot of the th- argument about it is that... With Phobos, there's no weather pattern on it, so it couldn't be caused by normal erosion. Hey, Sherry. Hey, Sherry. Hello, Sherry. Hello. Oh. So, you what's your thoughts? What's that? It said happy birthday to Dakota. Oh, thank you. He's five. Yeah, I'm five I did get those nappies soon. This morning, I don't know if you see it. Uh, yeah, I saw it, but y'all were messaging me when I was at work, so. <laughs> but what, here, here, Sherry, what's your, what's your thoughts on the Mars and what happened there millions of years ago? Do you think something happened, like a nuclear war or a great war that destroyed a civilization? I believe that. Yeah, I believe that there were civilizations that were maybe mm-hmm. took form on the on these places, and things happened where they would have had to flee, or some of them would have lost their lives. No. So they reside in other places that could be here on Earth or up there. No. It's wherever they decided to flee to. I do believe also that the water is a big significant part of alien, and I believe that aliens do reside underneath water when they're here to an extent. Yeah. With the like the moon. And with Mars and with all of those, they're very, they're meant to be very known levels of high spiritual energy, Ooh. aren't they? Like these I can find of, what these, people these, if you there, think about it, as a witch, we follow these sort of things. We follow yeah. the, the symbolization of the same time as you. And countries. Um, and in them, like yeah. in all around the world, we all represent and we all follow different religions. And a lot of that brings in the, um, the, the planets and mm. A higher power that they're supposed to give off and I do believe that even though we're affected here on earth it's affected up there as well and I believe that we're more connected yeah. than what you think like some people saying in the room we're already alien that's very true we are yeah but some of us 
are spiritually more connected to alien than than you you know there are people that can communicate talk channel and do things with aliens i am one i have been getting visions been getting symbols been getting lots of things from them can speak them can speak their language but when you go back trying to understand what they're saying it don't always make sense. Right. It's, it's, yeah. it's all There's good. another okay. one I should send that picture to where I went in the house and had all these weird symbols on and see if she can figure that out too. It's probably it's probably satanic writing. It's maybe satanic writing. It could be. Jump to conclusions here. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. That's that's my brain psychic waves. Got, I've yeah. would probably be able to tell if they resemble any of the symbols that I see from the alien side, or if it is to do with the witchcraft side, because I do both. So okay. I'll send it to you on Twitter. I think I got you on Twitter. I'd just like so, to welcome some people into the chat. Who have we got there, Dakota? Oh, we have Jesse and Dr. Firefly, who is joining us from our D-Live stream. Welcome. Hello, all. I'm the alien of the group. So, uh, um, I'm really interested. I'm really interested. Really interesting. Where do you guys think that aliens come from? Because I have my own theory. Um, Again, it's purely just in my head. But I'm very interested, like, are they humanoid? Are they... Like, I want. I don't want to. Pa- I don't want to push. I'm. I just. I just want to listen. I just actually kind of want to know. And I might have a couple other well, questions um, because I'm really interesting, especially how um, the, there's some really right, interesting paths. So, right. The aliens. My opinion is there's there's thousands of different races. Right. Yeah. There's there's thousands and thousands of different races in this galaxy. Right. And yes. There's human. There's meant to be 24 different types of human in this certain sector of the galaxy, right? But then there's the then there's the genetic ones. There's the the greys, right, which are like r- robotically controlled, but like the higher ups, right? Then you've got the Palladians. Then you've got the Reptilians, and, and you have got a multiple. There's thousands. Dakota actually knows quite a lot about this. I'll hand you over to Dakota. Actually, I was just pulling this out real quick. You want to find some good reading material on what's out there? You want to try to get a hold of this book. Ooh. It's a uh, Get from the Stars Extraterrestrial Context and Guide of Alien Races. It's by Elena Denon. She's a good friend of ours. We've done a few shows with her, and there's a lot of interesting detail on where – a lot of them come from. We have a bunch from the Scorpio system. We have the Pleiades. There's like five yeah. different yeah. versions. Lyrans. Hey, they, they're coming from all and over. It's tr- and it's also true what uh, Stuart McDonald says, interdimensional. Yeah. Yeah. Interdimensional. yeah it even gives, does, towards yeah. the end of the book, it actually gives a nice little map of where they're all from. So if you want to look towards certain stars... I'm not yeah. being funny, but with like with like like what Chris said with the alien species, I believe that they they come from many places. I believe that they're interdimensional. I believe that they are of um, a spirit form as well. You've got ones that look like yeah. spirit, but they're not. Um, in in reality, our our planet is meant to come from a, a star system. Okay, we come from a star system apparently. So we are part of a universe, we are a part of a world and a place that is fully open and used and we do not even get to see half of that. And I believe through being made, we've all been made to be individually different and to look individually different and to act individually different. I believe that some of the species that we see here today are clones. They are ones that are made to continue the work of those that may be up there still waiting I, there's a lot of reasons to what I think the aliens are, but I do believe that they all come from different walks of life. They're all here for different reasons. And mm-hmm. I believe they're also all formed for different reasons as well, just as we are. We're all individually different. We all do individually different things, mm-hmm. and it's no different for them. The core. Mm-hmm. Well, she's, she's on yeah. the money. Nope. Yeah, that's yeah. Su- super interesting. Am I, I'm always on the money. Come on, <laughs> not not literally getting money, but I'm on it. I, I know you're on the money, Sherry. Okay, so <laughs> then, um, I'm, I'm interested in you guys' theory. So, where did we come from? How did we, uh, like, mm. are, are 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 we? Because there's lots of different theories depending on if, you know if you're spiritual, if you're scientific, if you're an uh, alien believer. I'm just what's what you? How did we appear on Terraforma? 
Like how I think that a lot of us were formed in a. Would you say like I, I said to you that we're all from like we're all from a different like a universe yeah. from a galaxy and that. Now it's all said down here that the whole world and the whole galaxy is formed by <clears> grains <throat> of sand, grains of material that would would build us. So I believe that ourselves and them in like their different planets, their different realms, their different ways, we was all formed for like different individual things. So I believe that we all started off from a very minute, fragile element I, that formed us I, to be I think, something a lot bigger. I, well, what, I don't think we were originally from this earth. We're no originally no, that's from, what I'm saying, from a galaxy. Yeah, like a, a frame, yeah, like a I think, something. I think somebody's maybe tinkered with our DNA, to be purely honest with you, right? Yeah, that is I well. do think, I don't think we're from this galaxy. I think there's, there's, the stories in the grapevine goes that from the extraterrestrials that have had contact with us, we're not really from this galaxy. We're from a different galaxy and we've been brought here. And I think you've got to remember, I think we've been, we've been fiddled with, like, let's face it this way, we've been genetically modified. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, I think the only way we'll ever find that out is if we actually meet someone, you know. Push your, push your thoughts on it, Dakota, because Dakota is, I'm back. Humans are, what's your thoughts, Dakota? Where did, where did humanity come from originally? Obviously, who do you think? Well, the main, course of action does seem like there was life already starting to form here then yes. ETs happened to come across it they realized they had the technology mm-hmm. and started using this planet as their own genetic petri dish there was already materials here in fact some theories out there say that if you have O negative blood you might actually be a descendant of the Anunnaki and are more likely to be abducted yes yeah. That's another one of the theories that's in Elena's book. Oh, yeah. so, okay, sure that, that is, so here, let me let me break down my theory because you guys cover it very interesting, and I'm just curious what you guys is uh, you guys take on this. So yeah. I think that um, most things, trees, plants, a lot, a bulk of the animals are native to this planet. Um, I believe that throughout multiple times, um, aliens have come and seeded different things. I think that's the reason why we think we see that why in science we see these different explosions and then these extinctions. Mm-hmm. And what we're what we're seeing is genetic testing going on and occurring. Um, yes. So we're combining that. We also have uh, we also have the biblical stories, which are also just lessons to explain science that is that is not able to be understood by the average person and just kind of put it tell it in like a fable. And so uh, the reason I think like because, you know, with humans, we can accept pig parts. We can also have very Mm -hmm. similar DNA to things like uh, different types of primates. But then there is certain things that um, our primates and some of the other mammals that exist that we actually can't consume. Um, And and so my theory is, is that we are completely made. Um, We don't come from any place else. Now, I I will have a caveat. We might have came from Venus. Venus might have been the test, the test place for bringing mm-hmm. DNA up so that they had a clean environment. Um, that's why they. That's why currently there's a cloud around Venus and we can't send anything down there because they don't want us to see some of the inf- the some of the technology that you know they throw to the wayside. Um, but going back, uh, it, I think that we are the aliens of this planet, and we are also genetically created to live on this planet. Um, yes, and that's why a lot of people like. For for example, myself, um, I will never ever go into space. Um, I have no desire. It sounds horrible, um, but <laughs> I also have friends that talk about wanting to go to Mars and wanting to go to the Moon. Um, when mm. I think of that, it just makes me. It, it actually makes me extremely just nervous inside thinking about leaving the planet. So, but we yeah. but we have to leave the planet one day. We have to because eventually we're going to get that high. It might be another thousand years from now when we're highly advanced. We are going to have to make that step. We're going to have to make that like start. Got to start sounding like Star Trek here. We're going to have to go out and build new homes. We're going to Why? have to go to planet to planet because we can't. I know this is going to sound strange. We can't stay in one place, right? I'm, talking, I'm starting to turn into Elon Musk, right? 
We cannot stay in one place. So, right? so my, so you're 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 saying that we're going to reach a particular, we're going to reach a pinnacle, and we're not going to reverse. Yeah, I I think that humans have been far more advanced than we currently are, and I think. Well, yeah, we probably are. Every and then some, we or some outside celestial or the sun or our mm-hmm. atmosphere knocks us back down, yep. and we we never can reach that particular stage. Now there might be some people we might actually be able to send small colonies, but as a mass yep. of people, I don't think that. Um, I, I think that there's I, nature. Ha, nature knows how to balance. Nature is always oh, yeah, spectacular yeah. balancing, and so oh, I, see, I, I, see, I, I see your point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, touching on touching on what you just said there is, um, I believe that we, as human beings, we're only allowed to get to a certain um, intellect. Once we get past that, and once we start start seeing things through the smoke screen and seeing what's happening, I think that's when the the great reset happens. And I think this 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 may occur like at the stage we're at now, when we're advanced. And they don't want us going any further than we already are, kind of thing. And this yeah. is when either depopulation or whatever you want to call it starts to happen. I don't know. So, so that's actually so a that... really good point. Vic. Go ahead, sorry, Chris. <coughs> no, no, when you go, when you go. No, so, 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 Chess King, um, I'm interested with with you saying that, um, you know, we're seeing now, um, we're seeing a slowly depopulation of the planet. If if you look, um, throughout every country right now in in 2022, we're seeing that uh, the the birth rate is actually severely dropping. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're we're seeing the ionosphere around Earth, and we're seeing the sun start doing things of signs of micronova ni- micronovaing. We're seeing the solar. We're seeing the sh- the shifts. Of the poles, and we're seeing crazy electromagnetic areas pop up, very similar to the Bermuda Triangle and such like that. Especially in uh, um, the Indian Ocean, where the possible possible pole shift is going to happen. So, um, could we have got to this particular point now that we're recognizing, you know, that that other species could exist? Um, could we actually be on the precipice of a, a of that of that time? Well, I think I think we can, and I think that's that's where we're at, really. I mean, if you look back, these sightings have increased over, uh, I'd say, the last five to ten years. And I noticed what was happening is people were going on about chemtrails, thinking that the government are just releasing chemtrails to poison the population. But I seen it a different picture. Um, I seen it; they were were causing some kind of dullness in the sky, so we couldn't see. The cl- see into the clear blue skies that we once used to see and I'll tell you this story about four or five summers ago my brother woke me up and said come on come on have a look at this I said it better be interesting you know to wake me up at this time anyway the window that he had open was basically on an extension roof and we could see above the houses clear blue sky and I see these lights, and they look like my picture, basically just like my picture, and um, they were basically forming into each other, it looked like they were breeding, like flies, you know when flies go on top of each other, well these orbs were were doing that, and it looked like you could actually even see them breeding, and it just makes me think, are, are we subconsciously already there, people are more wide you know, open, they don't laugh when you talk about aliens now. I reckon 50% of the population believe it. So I think we're there. Um, is that the reason why they would want to depopulate because of that? But I don't think just because of that, no. I think it's probably because the humans, uh, they, they just want to keep us dumbed down for so long. And once we know it's like game over kind of thing. I think, I think that this is my opinion, I'll hand you over to Dakota. I mean, this is my opinion, right? Humans, what do we do best? We kill each other, right? Let's face it, that's what we do. We consume. We take over land, we take the oil, we take the lithium, that's what we do. If we get into space, which is going to happen, right? Is we're going to go for asteroids, we're going to start mining them, and then we're, they're going to run out of them, right? And then we're going to say, oh, look at that planet over there, let's go over there. And we'll go to that planet, and then we'll resource that planet, and we'll grow, and we'll grow, and we'll grow. And I think that's what the alien life out there know this. And I think I think we've done this before, to be truthful with you, right? I think we've done this before, and I think they're afraid that it's got to go down the same road. And you go. 
Mm-hmm. Well, like I said before, a lot of the theories out there, let's take Mars as an example, is that at one point it was a lush green planet, but then something happened. Mm-hmm. Possibly war, who knows? There's plenty of signs that some sort of nuclear activity took place. And to this day, we have a lot of reports saying that there may be underground civilizations. There's still life up there. It's just they went underground in order to sustain themselves. Now, obviously, take that with a grain of salt. But we look at all these companies that are trying to launch people, make space travel more accessible. With, say, like Elon Musk, considering some of his rockets rockets blowing up uh, success. They're trying to make... These, there's a short window in order to be able to pull off a launch successfully without basically blowing up. They're trying to extend this window, make it so these rockets can survive a multitude of different uh, conditions so that way they can just launch at any time. And we're also building what they're calling arcs. They're supposed to. They're, so far, a lot of the ones are, that we have now are failing. But to just try to retain as much of human life, as plant life, life we have on Earth now, in the event of a major cataclysm. So we may already be in the end game. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Here's a question: Do you think that uh, aliens can possess a human body, Dakota? You already know where I'm going with this from my live stream that one time. We've had it happen on this show a couple of times. Okay. But we know that an alien can take over a human body, and we know that alien can use a human body to communicate. Can it be? Is it? Um, yeah. Is it more dangerous like a than the spirit possesses a body? It's, da- it's dangerous either way, spirit or alien, depending on what it is. Um, obviously, with alien, they're more of a, a living form than what That's a spirit a spirit form is. So, yeah, there could be a lot more of a a category of um, danger, having them come into you, being physically still here. But the fact is, is that it's dangerous if you channel a spirit or if you you channel yeah. An alien. The, the fact is, is that you've got to yeah. be open. You've got to be understanding of it, and you've got to be willing. Because if you're not, and you don't understand these things, it just you have it, to be willing. It can end your life sometimes if you don't do it the right way and know what you're doing. Can I ask you? Yeah. I don't know what the difference between an alien and a spirit is. To me, they seem like they would. They're both a foreign object. They're not human. So to me, they're one and the same. Um, like so, can I get a little bit better? description of what you're referring to so i'm you know i am a practicing well i, I used to be a practicing cool. witch um so i can tell yeah. you all about the the spirit realm um but the 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 alien spirit realm um saying that a alien can can come well, into your body is where i'm confused so i'd like some if, if i right, get some right. clarification that would be awesome let's just oh, yeah. say that a lot of the mechanics behind spirit possession temperature fluctuations all that everything you would it's, us recognize as spiritual activity, it can happen with ETs as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's the short answer. I did a film on this that's on Paraflex called Bonds of Beyond that it tries to explore this. Because technically, when you bring in the extra tr- dimensional argument, everything we know as gods, angels, demons, technically they can mm-hmm. be considered aliens under that broad umbrella. <laughs> so. Being that how they have a lot of the same properties, there have been instances, and there's episodes here on this channel, and as well as other ones where we've all gotten together, where we've had people almost lose their lives because of ET interference, or what we believe to be, I should say. Just in and case some, we're, we're some, wrong a, some alien entities can be entwined in the spiritual realm to do with spirit yes. as well. Me, Dakota, and a few guys from a previous um, company know that very well. And um, the thing is, is when you say, what, what, what is the difference between an alien and a spirit? Well, let, let's be honest, like spirits, yeah, okay, they're either of, of something that has not lived, okay, in some cases, so they would be known as things maybe like ghosts and stuff like that. Then you've got your spirits, which are your human, okay, they're human, 
Mm-hmm. They are us, but in a spiritual form. We've still got an energy. We've still got a existence. We can still do things, and it's no different for the alien either. Like, they can... Aliens are very different to us, even though some of us, that we, if we see them in form, they look like like a spiritual form they do like when my one come to me at first it looked like a spirit form okay but you could tell it was not a it wasn't a spirit it was an alien oh. and it's here oh we lost them oh, very lost rare. Them. No, I'll, I'll put them back in it is very rare it is very rare to see them show in their true form which is in their true body they will show in a way that you will not be able to see them unless they want you to see them and like dakota says they do they will use the same energy as a spirit they will give off the same sort of feelings and that as a spirit sometimes, yeah. you know. It... I mean, yeah, I mean, especially I'm not going to talk about what happens to me, but the one that I've encountered, he, he, how can I say this? He can travel anywhere he wants, right? And he can travel yeah. any realm and he's met spirits, but he's... He's so old, he's like billions of years old. And Dakota's, Dakota's in the same boat here, and so is Sherry. They've met his friends. I'll just put them that way. <laughs> I'm not going to get there, I'm not going to get there. It's, it's, it's not just that, though, but there. if you think about it, like, we do all of this communication and we do all of this sort of stuff, and, and I can understand why people would get confused mm-hmm. about it as well. Like, obviously, when... Um, co- Obviously, it is different when you communicate with them and you commu- communicate with spirit. Even though there's a lot of similarity, there are things that are different in both of them that tell them apart. Um, it, it's a difficult one to really to try and explain, but all I can say is that a lot of them do show them in a spiritual form, but, but they're not. They're not okay. dead. So for clear, so oh, clarification, so for clarification, um, what we're talking. So a spirit is something that has that used to be human or has human tendencies and a, mm-hmm. and a spirit alien doesn't have the human tent. Like the reason, the reason I ask is like, what would, where would you fall something like the Fae? Um, where would they fall? Like, because the Fae uh, would be a, would be an alien form. Okay. They are, okay, cool. they are a bo- both. Like when okay. you look at them, they look very human like, don't they? But they're very tiny. And yes. stuff like that. Okay. But they have got the form of an alien because they can use such things as magic and being able to move into other dimensions. So they are both, okay? And I'm not saying that you can't have that here on this plane. That is why there are such things as people that are spiritual. We see from both sides of the world. We see from the living side, which is here, and we see from the spiritual side, which is over there. If that is alien or spirit or whatever it is, we see from another dimension. Not everybody that is here on this plane and on this earth is human we come from other places and we are here for reasons and to learn and to teach that's what i believe interesting okay hmm. dakota would you like to, to, to carry on dakota's dakota kind of, <laughs> uh, dakota's i think dakota's we need to be very careful here we need to be very careful because this is what happens when he wants to come through and Especially Dakota's one and my and mine's. I can block them. But, Dakota, do you want to add anything to this? Oh, yes, yes, it is easy to get confusing. And some of the explanations that people are tossing over each other right now probably didn't help. But I fully believe that with everything that happens involving both E.T. and Spirit, we're probably going to have to rewrite the books on how we understand things yeah. all together with whatever's coming happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can I can say this right. I think we're in a time. The Earth's in a time where the, it's got one chance, and I think this is its last chance because we we should be using nuclear weapons. You see, nuclear weapons they they've been causing a lot of damage, right? They've been causing a lot of damage to the extraterrestrials for different dimensions. There's a certain extraterrestrial in question, and they do not like it when we use nuclear weapons. I mean, look at the Roswell, for instance, like that, you know? Right? It was just after the, the nuclear bombs were detonated. Some The Earth is on its last chance. This is it. If, 
if we if we go down the route of what we've went before, because I think this is the this is the the fourth time the Earth has got to this technologically advanced state. If we continue down this road, right, they'll wipe the slate clean, and I don't think we'll be allowed to come back. So, so Chris, can I and ask why, true. if if we've been down this path four times already, um, why would you think that this yep. is the, the final path? Because, like for example, I'm. Because I, you know, I'm a farmer and I'm a permaculture farmer and I've had yep. really crappy land. And over the course of 15 yep. years, I was able to transfer the really crappy land into beautiful land. Um, and yeah. as long as some humans exist that want to make things better, then we can fix because Mother Nature is extremely powerful. We can fix any damage that occurs. It, it might take us a long time to fix that damage, but um, we don't have – the, the being able to blow up the planet with nuclear weapons is a fantasy. That's a that's a military industrial fantasy that they that they use to scare us. Now, can we do damage? Oh, absolutely. Well, yeah. Oh yeah, definitely can do damage. Look at all of the disasters that are going on it's, in this world and all of the things that are going on in this planet and stuff at the minute. Like it's, this world is being been damaged for a very very long time, and there isn't anything in this world that's going to take tons and tons of damage and never have anything happen to it. Everything will come to an end in the end. Because I, you can't just keep okay, destroying I mean, uh, Yeah, I mean, you look... You, I, I see where you're coming from. I see where the test of the nuclear weapons and stuff like that, life's coming back to that. Right? But the test that... What was it? With the test that the taser bomb, the biggest bomb ever built, life's coming back. Right? I see your point, yeah. We could have a nuclear war, yeah. It could vaporise quite a lot of humanity. And eventually, humans, will, the world will come back because nature always it's takes amazing. things back. Yeah. yeah. But I think they're afraid that we go down the road a war like race. That's what they're afraid of. They're afraid that we get into space. They're afraid that we go to other worlds and we start colonising other worlds. And they that is what they're afraid of. And they're afraid, also afraid of... I know... Detonating all the nuclear bombs in the world wouldn't probably destroy the Earth, right? But it would damage different realities, different dimensions where there is aliens. Aliens are living. Where them doing this would kill billions and billions of them. And this is what they're afraid of. We go down the path. Yes, the Earthlings will probably be wiped out. Yes, we'll probably all die. It's so so and that's what, what, of. Can, what can about excuse this? me can I, can I just jump on because I've got three percent battery and I think it's this this is what I want to touch on because it's in tune with what you're saying so I watched a documentary and it said when um, the US military started messing about with the atomic bomb that was like the aliens woke up yeah. the kids have found the matches here Right, and when, when they let that atomic mm -hmm. bomb off, that's when we started seeing more sightings of the aliens. Now, the aliens have no interest in if we damaging each other, but if we are a potential threat threat to another civilization, which I believe nuclear power is, that you know that could cause damage to other civilizations. That's that's when they're going to intervene. And I also seen a documentary where yes. a couple of UFOs sort of uh, diffused nuclear bombs. I don't know if you've seen it, but the, right. the, there's something regarding nuclear nuclear bombs that L, uh, alien life don't like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, put it this way, right? Put it this way, right? See, yeah, uh, see the Roswell crash with aliens, right? The, the aliens that underneath are, have come out and said basically, and this is ones that have contact people have come out and says there's, there's different dimensions, and in these dimensions there's a certain type of alien, right? And the, I don't know how nuclear bombs work, right? I can't have their belt and stuff like that, but I don't know how they work. And when, maybe Dakota can help me here, but when, the, when they're detonated, it does something to their reality. And if, if more of these weapons are detonated, they'll wipe this race out. Right? You see where I'm coming here? And this race is a peaceful race, and it's a highly advanced race. And they know if we use them, they've had it. Right. Dakota? A lot of the concepts that Chris is trying to hint at are theoretical. They go into quantum physics. Yeah. A lot that I know that quite a few people in this chat would likely not understand. But 
basically light particles are known to move through various different dimensions at base. And what they say with the Roswell crash in particular is that it disrupted the flow of how their engines worked, causing the crash. Mm -hmm. And another thing that is coming out about what happened is that at least there was at least one survivor that they were able to talk to and the beings that were recovering in the Roswell crash were children, basically. Yes. And that's what they realized. Yeah. You know, what a lot of people don't realize, it's a lot more complex and nobody can physically process how the multiverse actually works. It's not just one dimension. You have us saying you have a dimension of the fluffy bunny people. No, well, maybe you do. You never know. But it makes up several different parts. You have various different parallel realities to our own all detonating that bomb about the same time. It's going to cause a rip. Yeah. Who said? Who knows what's going to come through that rip? Yeah, if you do, if you did anything to every nuclear weapon on this earth right now, eventually the earth would come back, trees start growing again, earth would come back, right? But it would have done its damage, and by then it'll be too late. There you go. Okay, so so then what's the theory? Because let's let's say the North Korea does or doesn't we we've most major countries have not detonated a nuclear bomb since 1998 um we've had a treaty since then that we've chose to not practice using even testing for any testing purposes as well uh so what if and and i'm again i like to look at all angles so i'm not past i'm not saying that i believe mm -hmm. this or don't believe this but what if actually the aliens that we're saying are trying to protect us are actually holding us back from being able to achieve greatness because like um, like Sherry said, some of the aliens live here on Earth, and they maybe they are the warring factions. Because, you know, there is folks, like there's plenty of wonderful humans that don't want to kill other humans, that want to make, that want to beautify this planet, that That's want right. to do wonderful, great things. Uh, what if we have been infiltrated, and what we're seeing is just... Um, they're making us. They're making us think that the planet's overpopulated because they want us to kill each other. They want us to think that a lot of this stuff is dangerous, so we don't research it more to be able to achieve our greatness. And maybe they're seeding us so that we can't reach this next level. Yeah, you're 100 percent correct. They have been here for a long time. There are aliens. It's the truth. Eddie knows it. Glenn knows that. They they have been here a hundred years. I do want... Sorry, Dakota, carry on. No, go no, ahead. I was just going to say, I will say, and I will verify for any alien species, not all of them are out to be evil or to stop us. Some of them realise very much what we mm. are doing to our planet and do care about our planet and do care what, what we're doing here because it does affect them up there. And as I said, we are linked a lot more than you think to them. So every life matters. And obviously, the, the, a lot of these civilians that you see from these other planets are very peaceful beings that want a peaceful life and want a good planet, and they want the other planets to be the same way. Yes, we've got evil, we've got bad that want to do the opposite and want to take over, like you're saying. Is it Finley? Firefly. Yeah, so, like, I understand where Firefly is coming from with that as well, like, the negative side. Yeah, there are negative sides that want to stop us and want to do things but there are also energies of that side that do want to help and have been involved in all of this disaster that's happened like these missiles that were sent off and these things that have happened that they've had to intervene with so i'll let you go over to dakota because dakota will be able to explain it a lot better but they're not all dangerous like you said before there are some good people who truly do want to try and make this world a better place. And it's not much different. The What I found is that with the people that tend to try to assume that the aliens are bad, they may have had some sort of tendencies to show prejudice towards people for no reason. It's mm -hmm. why I try to tell people is that if you try anything to, if you happen to be in contact or try anything or try to research it, don't 
try to alienate it so far, try to think of it as people who come from another country. And there was an incident we did kind of hint at earlier where with a previous company that we all worked at before, it was uh, actually we're coming up on the one-year anniversary of it. Can you believe that? My God. It's a long time. Where there was an entity that we all started researching that attacked us on one of these lives. Oh. Oh, yes. And let's just say the first guy that reported it, that something was going on. He started coughing up blood. Others were mm-hmm. that they were feeling like they were being stabbed. They had with these weird shadow entities. It's the entity that often known as the Hat Man. We were researching. Mm-hmm. Now, there's one of our theories was that the Hat Man may have some connection Bobby. with ETs because some of the lore behind it. We trace it to Breton mythology, which was the Anku, but you can trace similar entities with just about any death gods in any culture. And with the Anku in particular, one of the origin bits in lore was that it was the firstborn son of Adam and Eve, Cain. Mm. And Cain was also speculated in some bits of lore to not actually be Adam's biological son. Yes, I know I'm di- going into religion, but this is just part of the research <laughs> part of it. Mm-hmm. And Cain was not. Cain's true father was actually the serpent, Samael, the only entity that was ever specifically named, called Satan in religious texts. Now, in some documents that are like guidebooks to ETs, Samael and the being known as Lilith were said to be Anunnaki king and queen. So that's where the ET connection came in. It goes further that there were several people who were got hit specifically noticed that there was beings that looked an awful lot like me showing up, potentially trying to help them get over it. And that's where we may have determined that I may have hybrid children that do like to show up on these shows every now and then. Oh, yes, they do. Oh yeah. If yeah. there's the yeah. beings out there, they allegedly they come, say like the Pleiades, for example. A lot of the focus on there is said that because they are the closest genetically related to us. Now they there's people that say, oh, we must be like ants coming out of an ant hill. Why would the ETs come be interested in us? Well, allegedly some of them find this planet to be a very beautiful place. Mm-hmm. So why do certain people go to the Amazon rainforest to keep it from getting chopped down? They want to preserve that beauty, and there's a lot of benefits that the Amazon rainforest provides globally. Or they might see us as just dumb monkeys. Well, monkeys can be quite intelligent, and there's a lot that can be brought from it from that type of research. Well, I'm, all I'm saying is that there's a lot more to this than people are willing to look at. Yeah. So. You've got to remember, Ter, the governments of the world have done deals over the years with the Greys. We'll do, I'll just say the names of the Greys. They have done deals with them for technology and computer chips and weapons. But you've got to remember what the Greys have gave, like, I'll just say the US government, what they've gave them is thousands of years old to them it's nothing right it's like it's like going back in time and getting a cave man a musket right that's what they've went and done because they were doing genetic manipulation to people of earth in return you think about all the cattle mutilations and all the other kind of things that's been going on that's them but i think we're in a part we're in a how can i say this and I think Sherry and Dakota will probably agree with me here. We're in a part now where the Greys are no really in power anymore. The, the humans are starting to get help from beyond. Dakota, Jenna? Uh, that's, that's where a lot of the work coming through the ether is saying is that uh, there's been talks of wars. There's a lot of people who do actual traveling exactly. say that when they've been in contact with these ETs, they see battle plans that 
a majority of the grays have been drawn out, but there's obviously still a few stragglers they need to track down. Yeah. Let's just say if everything does turn out to be true, and I do try to stick with the allegedly because I know these are yeah. exotic claims, but yeah. we're about to see a very big change. One of our colleagues firmly believes that by February 2nd, we might start seeing some real action of this yeah. year. Hmm. Yes. So, okay, so um, this is all super interesting. Um, the, the, one, the one thing I, I am interested in is we know that the sun, well, okay, we don't know, but let's just say we speculate based on the science that the sun is going through a new cycle. It, like, you know, there's, it's already changed in all of our lives. The sun's already changed color once. Um, yeah. The light spectrum has changed, and they're saying that it's getting ready to change uh, probably within the next uh, latest journals that just came out about uh, – end of last year, the sun's about to change a color again. And again, you know, it's hard for us humans to be able to see these the light color changes, but it does, mm-hmm. it does, you know, on the light spectrum change a little bit. So uh, is, do you think that um, this is related to something that they're doing? Is the sun just a natural cycle? And are, are we seeing if a, if a coming um, alien conflict let's just say, is occurring? Is it because of something that's happening, like, very locally? Is it something that people's doing? Is it um, the uh, the universe ecosystem? Like, I, I'm just kind of curious what you guys I, – what, what, I, what I like to do is I, I, like, to, I like to combine the, the stories that they don't tell us with the science that they do tell us because the truth is always somewhere in the middle. Not, it, it's hard to say at this point. There's, like I said before, with everything that's coming, there's going to be so much that changes that everybody's going to have to relearn what they think is their understanding of what it comes to the supernatural as a whole. Yeah, when I like when we say about um, the world ending, we don't mean officially the world ending, but there's going to be a change to the way that the world is. There's going to be things that are going to happen, like Dakota said, that's going to be different. We're going to have to change the way that we look at life, the way that we uh, live life. Um, obviously, you're saying about the sun and about the changes in its colour. And uh, let's face it, sure. the sun's a very old thing, okay? And it's it's endured a lot of what we do here and a lot of what they do up there, okay? So there are effects from all around, okay? Because everywhere is being affected so all of these disasters all of these things that happen in this world there will be similar sort of things happening up there for them not saying like oh there's the seas coming up to them and this is going on and that's going on but where we have effects down there there is effects going on up there so this could very much manipulate the way that the the sun is being affected okay and Obviously, everybody that knows the sun and the moon is a very important source of energy for this planet and for a lot of other planets. Now, if you look at it, when you look at the planets, how many planets have got suns and moons around them and need them? That is very effective. Okay, so like we're finding problems and stuff with our moon and our sun things are happening. If that's happening here, that means that that's happening up there. Okay, so what we're experiencing here is what's experiencing there. And this is why I believe that they're visiting as well because we're all going through that same effect, but they know where that effect is coming from, because we are the ones that are disruptive. We are the ones doing stupid things. We are the ones that are not seeing the damages and the evil that we're doing to this world, okay? But there are some in this world that are open and spiritual, and that is the reason they come and connect with them and talk to them, because it's the best way for them to get through, which is why they will use individual people. Chris, would you like to carry on? I was just going to say that the sun has got more than you know that's going on right now, especially with the ETs and stuff like that. The sun is... How can I say this so you can understand? Um, this, there's more to do with the sun that's going on right now to do with the Earth. Yes, it does have cycles. It does have cycles. But did you know that there was a planet behind the sun that cannot be seen? Did you know yeah. this? Yes. 
Right. So yeah, talking about Vulcan. Terms. Well, different people have different yeah. different people have different terms. Yeah, Vul- Vulcan Vulcan was a theoretical Vulcan was actually a theoretical thing that we mm-hmm. haven't been able to prove in just yet, but we do feel the gravitational pull um, of yeah. something because most solar systems in the universe are actually a. Uh, um, bisolar. Um, it's so ours is very rare with only one visible sun, mm-hmm. um, and so that is so. Yeah, the Vulcan theory is, is very interesting, and with uh, where we were talking about the Earth changes, um, because one thing I actually um, I fall in the category that I actually don't blame humans as much as other folks do. I actually think that um, we are doing we only see we are tricked into seeing what the bad people are doing and thinking that the bad people are causing all these problems. Because if we also look, we can see um, the, uh, we can see the, the octagon on top of Neptune. So if you've never looked at Neptune through a, yes. uh, a telescope, you'll see on the top of Neptune, there's yes. an octagon, but that yes. actually is changing shape. Uh, we have yes. seen that in Jupiter, we've seen the eye of Jupiter has started to wobble a little bit. Uh, mm-hmm. We are starting to see the increase of the cloud cover to our theoretical, the increase of the cloud cover in Venus. So we are seeing um, planetary changes at least everywhere through our own, um, through our solar system. And this is something that we've been discovering pretty recently. So something is happening in our, in our neighborhood, at least. Um, Your sun is unique. What's your thoughts, uh, Firefly, on your sun? Would you say your sun was unique? No. No. Well, no, our sun, our sun is interesting, but it's not unique. Now, I, I, I do want to add something. I do find you. Um, we were talking about the Goldilocks and how Mars is in the Goldilocks range. Um, we actually, yes. as Earth, are not actually in the Goldilocks range. Uh, the Goldilocks mm-hmm. range would be uh, between the Earth and Mars, where Sirius is, where the uh, that that uh, mm-hmm. meteor that exists. We mm-hmm. are just on the inside of that, and part of the speculation is because of our protective atmosphere. And because of the heat that is generated from the inside of Earth is the reason why we are we have the ability to inhabit this planet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very true. Well, Dakota, we've got about what five minutes left of the show. What would you like to talk about? No, I just gotta admit this was a pretty good turnout tonight. Yeah, it was. It was. It was but, interesting. Well, yeah, thank yeah, you guys so much for allowing me to come in and ask some questions. I, I, I learned what? a lot, and I and you really enjoyed it. We'll need to have you on as a guest one night. Well, yeah. I'd be down for that. Yeah. I think that'd be interesting. Yeah. I've been him up for a um, Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, guys, we're going to be... Obviously, we've got the show on Friday night with uh, Sherry and Drew. Um, the, the Lost Magics. Them on Saturday, and then we're moving the show from a Wednesday night to Sunday night. But we're also working on another show. Believe it or not, Sherry, we're working on another show that's which will be out soon. So Dakota, would you like to say anything before we go? Ah, uh, yes, that's very true. Uh, well, do I have one little poster for everyone here. Oh, the ladies cool. for the Lost Magics are, will be doing tarot card readings. Uh, there's a prize towards the bottom there. Hopefully it's accurate enough for the fact that we're bouncing between UK and US. Yeah. Uh, well, be sure to okay. tune into that and you want to get yourself a reading. You know, the, the, there's going to be a PayPal mm-hmm. link in the description. I'll be there to help monitor, so make sure that everybody joins in on that. Yes, and hopefully Sherry doesn't set anything on fire. Oh, well, like I did drop it. I missed that one. So, so everybody, now that, yeah. So, thank Dubs, Sherry, Firefly, thank you for coming. Well, how will we contact you? Are you on Facebook, Firefly? Can we contact yeah, you that uh, way? Maybe get you on as a guest one night? X-Doctor Firefly on anything that's in social media is mine. So All right. um, I wanted to welcome you guys. I discovered you guys on D Live, right. so I'm a very active user on D Live, and I'm very happy to yeah. see new, new, and well, great content coming to D Live. So very, very excited to see that you guys are that mm-hmm. you guys came here, and uh, thank you again for having me as a uh, as popping in, and I'll be more than happy to, to be a guest in the future. And again, welcome, thank you, and all the 
Great. Uh, yeah, it's a good thing I actually started monitoring the chat for DLive. I started to notice when we're missing out on some people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I tell you, I tell you, you, you DLive would be a good place to go to, Kowalski. We've been streaming there for a while now. Yeah, it, uh, I've been on DLive for two and a half years, and it's just one of those things, once you find the right niche, um, I, I, I will say the one advice I have is nothing that you're talking about should be M-tagged. Um, so you guys should, you guys do not need the M tag. What that does is that stops you from being on the carousel. So. Gotcha. All right, we'll go ahead and fix that later. Right. Right, hey, everybody, right. thank you for coming, and I hope you'll enjoy Lost Magics on Friday with Sherry Join and us. All right. Bye, guys. Uh, good night, everybody.